OpenAI's Altman and other AI giants back warning of advanced AI as extinction risk. I know, I know another article about the dangers of AI and what they could possibly mean and almost like an AI apocalypse is going to happen tomorrow. However, I think that this article actually touches on a point uh, that we've been trying to make and it's a point that I've been talking about uh, in multiple videos as we've discussed AI and, and the things going on and, and really the problems that we're seeing uh, that's, that's really mostly being caused by the talking heads and people that are talking about the risks of AI, but they're, they're not talking about the genuine risk of the current generative generative AI model that we're seeing and mostly the conversation starts there so they mention chat GPT they mention uh, open AI and, and other generative AI platforms but then the conversation drifts off into talking about ex machina style uh, AI and the dangers of that and it doesn't really address the real issues which I finally feel like are being somewhat talked about uh, here in this article so let's jump into this it's worth our time to just look at this one more time and see what they're saying but make way uh, for yet another headline grabbing AI policy intervention hundreds of AI scientists academics tech CEOs and public figures from OpenAI CEO Sam Altman and DeepMind CEO uh, Demise Hassabis to veteran AI computer generist, uh, scientist uh, Jeffrey Hinton, MIT's Max Tegmark, and Skype co-founder uh, to Grimes the musician and populist podcaster Sam Harris, uh, to name a few. So there's just a bunch of various different people that have gotten on board with this have added their names to a statement urging global attention on existential AI risk. This statement, uh, which is being hosted on the website of a San Francisco based privately funded not for profit called the Center for AI Safety, seeks to equate AI risk with the extent in the, the ex ex existential harms uh, posed by nuclear apocalypse and calls for policymakers to focus their attention on mitigating what they claim is doomsday extinction level AI risks. Uh, so um, uh, they released a very simple statement um, and in hopes to uh, just make sure that everyone at all different places in life uh, can understand what they're trying to say. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. Look, at this point, at this point, what I can say with these guys, because it, it is bizarre to watch uh, a CEO like Sam Altman uh, uh, travel the globe and talk about uh, people embracing his product, uh, meet with governments about people embracing his product, talk about how he is excited about the future of the product, to then turn around and start talking about how uh, his product in particular <laughs> could be part of a potential global extinction of all of humankind. Um, I think these guys are uh, you know, basically, I, I personally think that Sam Altman and, and most of his team uh, understands that there's no such thing as bad press for their company. And the more and more they talk about it, even if it's on this crazy, scary doomsday pathway, the more people will uh, engage with it, the more people will use it. Um, I think they're very well aware of that. And I think a lot of this stuff is, is hype. However, um, there is genuine uh, concern to be had about this tool and how it's being used. And so uh, I think that uh, through the amount of just uh, uh, hype and, and hot garbage that people are talking about with this stuff and however they say, uh, whatever they want to say about it, there is a sliver of truth that needs to be uh, pulled from this and try to focus on uh, as far as what's really happening right now, the dangers that people like Elon Musk and um, Steve Wozniak are talking about as far as what AI like could do, AGI, uh, artificial general intelligence is obviously, yes, that's a real danger. Obviously, yes, there are things that are being built from it, but what's been released on the public um, has a danger in and of itself, uh, even more so than uh, the dangers of social media, but it's right along those lines. And social media was uh, uh, embraced 
um, without a full understanding of, of the dangers of, of what it could do and what it could cause, uh, only because none of us knew, no, nobody knew. And so we've been in an experiment with social media and the effects it's had on our culture. I don't think anybody's really happy about it, um, what it's done over the past couple years. And so with that mindset, with that understanding of, of what is the potential that could happen, um, you would think that more people would be uh, cautious in regards to their approach to embracing something like ChatGPT. Now, I use ChatGPT. I've used it many times for many different occasions. Um, I've been impressed with what it could, what it can do. But I do think, uh, I mean, I've used it in the sense of understanding its limitations and understanding how it's designed and understanding what it is. Um, and I'm not saying I'm going to sit here and tell you exactly how it operates and what it does. I'm just telling you I'm aware of the limitations of the tool. I'm aware of how I'm, I'm somewhat aware or aware enough of how the tool was designed to know what I'm dealing with. Um, I do not appreciate the... Uh, the uh, way the tool has been designed to have actual conversation with someone. Um, I, I think that that's a little dangerous and I don't understand the point of that. It's it's faking actual intelligence, um, in my opinion. This is my opinion. And I don't see the need for that because it's not artificial intelligence and it never will be. It is a baseline foundation for what could become later on um, actual artificial general intelligence. But this tool is not artificial intelligence and it's a um, it's a language model and it, it is uh, it, it is a, a social media on crack really um, it's like it's like if, if Google and Facebook had a baby it would be uh, chat GPT in my, in my opinion I'm just trying to be facetious but maybe there's a sliver of truth there but um, anyways there was an alt there was also uh, on another side note, there was also the open letter signed by Elon Musk and scores of others back in March, which called for a six-month pause on development of AI models more powerful than OpenAI's chat uh, GPT-4 to allow time for shared safety protocols to be devised and applied to advanced AI, warning over risks posed by ever more powerful digital minds that no one, not even their creators, can understand, predict, or reliably control. So, in recent months, there has actually been a barrage of heavily publicized warnings over AI risks that don't exist yet. Um, and it's funny, too, because their creators can't control it in the sense of, yeah, you can control it, but what you can't control is what people are going to do with it. You've handed it over uh, to the ocean of humanity, um, which is total chaos and uh, and uh, represents total chaos. And now people are picking it up and using it for whatever they desire. Uh, so that's that's where uh, um, we need to be careful. But this is the part of the article. I'm just going to skip to the part that I really wanted to, to show you and talk about. Uh, so it says, talk of existential AI risk also distracts attention from problems related to market structure and dominance. Um as Jenna Burrell, a director of research at, at Data and Society, pointed out in this recent Columbia Journalism Review article reviewing media coverage of ChatGPT, where she argued we need to move away from focusing on red herrings like AI's potential sentience uh, to covering how AI is further concentrating wealth and power. Uh, so, of course, there are clear commercial motivations for AI giants to want to route uh, regulatory attention into the far-flung th uh, theoretical future uh, with talk of an AI driven doomsday as a tactic to draw lawmakers minds away from more fundamental competition and antitrust considerations in the here and now and data exploitation as a tool to concentrate market power is nothing new. So I, you know, I don't agree with everything uh, that they said, but I mean, there, there definitely is signs that this is happening, that there's an intentional conversation that's drifting into the sentience AI warning and not really focusing on the real problem of what it is we have staring us in the face right now. Um, and I did, one can definitely draw those conclusions on how uh, people like Sam Altman and Elon Musk and all these different people are, are having these conversations. Is it intentional? Are they intentionally trying to do that? I don't know. Um, but, uh, it, one can certainly draw those conclusions or one can certainly be uh, scared of that's what's going on. But, um, and, and here's an example of this open AI was a not, was a notable non-signatory to the aforementioned Musk signed open letter, but a number of its employees are backing, um, this, uh, non-for-profit hosted statement, uh, while Musk apparently is not, 
Uh, so the latest statement appears to offer an unofficial, commercially self-serving reply by OpenAI um, to Musk's earlier attempt to hijack the existential AI risk narrative in his own interests, uh, which no longer favor OpenAI leading the, the AI charge. Instead of the statement calling for a development pause, which would risk freezing OpenAI's lead in the generative AI field, it lobbies policymakers to focus on risk mitigation, doing so while OpenAI is simultaneously crowdfunding efforts to shape uh, democratic processes for steering AI. As Altman put it, so the company is actively pos uh, positioning itself and applying its investors' wealth to influence the shape of any future mitigation guardrails alongside ongoing in-person lobbying efforts targeting international regulators. Altman also recently made public threats that OpenAI's tool could be pulled out of Europe in draft if draft EU AI rules weren't watered down to exclude its tech. Listen, this is a rule and this is a principle, uh, and I and and you know test me on this that um, Silicon Valley learned years ago. Um, and they learned it uh, through uh, these unicorn startup tech companies such as Uber um, and Facebook and all of these companies that just exploded overnight. And you've got people like Peter Thiel and different uh, high value investors all behind these same companies. I'm not saying Peter Thiel is with OpenAI, but I'm just using him as an example. I'm not sure who who is investing in OpenAI, but it's always the same individuals that are... Uh, buku rich and they are all involved in the same tech companies and what they learned years ago and specifically i can speak to uber um, is that uber went through massive regulatory problems as it grew i mean one of their biggest issues as it grew and expanded uh was the uh um government regulating uh their products uh, in, in various massive markets, such as New York, Uber experienced this with taxis and how the taxis actually had lobbyists trying to take them out. Um, and lo the lobbyists had much deeper pockets and much deeper connections than they could have predicted. And they went through a massive struggle as they grew trying to deal with that. Um, and, and it's the same with uh, uh, Airbnb and the same problems with regulatory agencies. And so this is a tactic that Silicon Valley has developed. It's something that is openly spoken about with these startup companies where you have a unicorn company like OpenAI that's exploding. And so part of their tactic to get out in front of being shut down by government agencies because it's going way too fast is for someone like Sam Altman to actually engage in government and lead the way in conversation and try to steer it away from regulating their product too much. This, that's all this is. They're trying to protect their bottom line. They're trying to protect their profitability. They, this is not a genuine effort to try and prevent uh, their product from becoming too dangerous. So do not fool yourself. This guy is not a saint. He's a CEO. Um, he's getting paid. He's getting paid very well. Um, and he has a very large evaluation on his company that he has to make come to fruition. That stamp is awesome for a startup company because that stamp shows you how, what people think of you. It shows you that they genuinely believe you're valuable, but that stamp is also stressful because now when you have an evaluation on your company that high, you have to make that sucker come to life. And that's what this man is trying to do. This is a tactic. You get in front of the media, you get in front of the news organizations, you get in front of, um, of all the regulatory agencies around the world that can prevent you from take, from entering into a market and you try to steal the narrative, take the narrative uh, and steer it in a way that's beneficial to your organization and not no, not so much, not so much, just as this, this is natural. I'm not saying that this is, that, that he's a bad person. I'm not saying that this is a bad thing to do. All I'm saying is that this is a natural thing that when you're steering the conversation like that and that's the agenda behind it, naturally there's going to be some things that never get talked about that should get talked about. There's going to be some things that never get regulated that potentially should get regulated because um, you're trying to you're you're you are the creator and designer of the problem, but you're also trying to be the the saint uh, of of the of the narrative around it, and it's a very very bad. Uh, it's a very it's a, it's a situation that could has the potential to become very very bad um that is unfortunately a reality with these organizations because most of these tech companies have learned their lessons and when they were exploding back in the day they dealt with massive regulatory prevention that really hurt their bottom line and it really hurt their evaluations and they had to fight through that so this is just just a tactic that's all this is this is what they have to do uh, but it is a very serious thing and the thing I wanted to focus on was the fact that um, they're calling the uh, most of the media coverage a red herring in that it's not genuinely dealing with the real 
uh, potential problems here. And case in point of what we're seeing with generative AI, uh, there's a few examples we have already of how people are using it and how people are embracing it potentially too much. Uh, most of you probably already know about this one. A uh, lawyer cited six fake cases made up by ChatGPT. Judge calls it unprecedented. This happened earlier in the week. It says a lawyer is in trouble after admitting he used ChatGPT to help write court filings that cited six non-existent cases invented by the artificial intelligence tool. Um, lawyer Stephen Schwartz of the firm, uh, Levito, uh, Levito and Uberman, uh, greatly I don't even know if I read that right, but greatly regrets having utilized generative artificial intelligence to supplement the legal research performed herein and will never do so in the future without absolute verification of its authenticity. Schwartz wrote in an affidavit on May 24th regarding the bogus citations previously submitted in U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Um, Schwartz wrote that the use of generative artificial intelligence has evolved within law firms and that he consulted with artificial intelligence website ChatGPT in order to supplement the legal research performed. The citations and opinions in question uh, were provided by ChatGPT, which also provided its legal source and assured the reliability of its content. He wrote, Schwartz admitted that he relied on the legal opinions provided to him by a source that has revealed itself to be unreliable. He's talking about ChatGPT chat gpt and stated that it is his fault for not confirming the sources provided by chat gpt uh, Schwartz didn't previously consider the possibility that an artificial intelligence tool uh, could provide false information even though ai chatbot mistakes have been extensively uh, reported by non-artificial intelligence such as the human journalists employed by reputable news organizations okay this is a weird way to word that, but okay. Uh, the lawyer's affidavit said he had never utilized ChatGPT as a re as a source for conducting legal research prior to the occurrence and therefore was unaware of the possibility that its content could be false. And so once again, uh, you have uh, the an, an example here of someone who's not tech savvy. It doesn't make him, it doesn't make him, it, you know, it doesn't make him a fool. I think, I think what makes him you know, he made a really bad mistake. And I think the one thing that you can hold against him is the fact that he fully embraced tech that he didn't fully understand um, and uh, trusted in it when he didn't even he didn't even know what it is or how it operated uh, and then took took it to court, which is the, just the worst. I mean, this guy feels foolish, but essentially the article talks about they're discussing now what the what the um, punishment's going to be for the lawyer. But, you know, this is just a, one of those examples of where of the dangers of what this stuff can cause and what this stuff can do. Could you imagine if your case that you had pending in court uh, was determined based on a citation of six fake cases made up uh, by a by ChatGPT and no one even bothered to question it? Uh, that's a that's a very uh, scary thing. Now, obviously, this was caught, and uh, but you know, it's an example of someone who has who definitely has higher, higher education, who you, who you would think would be you know more smarter than the average bear, basically, and. Uh, was able to be fooled by this uh, and, and made a very foolish decision uh, that we all can make, partly because we've all been in the situation where you use ChatGPT for something like this, and the research it spits out is actually genuine and it's very and it and it's very very intelligent. And so you you use it more and more like that, and then you you get to a place where you you trust it and you don't even question or do the research, and that's where you get in trouble. And so it's, it's stuff like this that people don't understand how to use it. They don't understand what it is. They don't understand that it's really at this level still experimental. Um, and they're not going to do the research and they're not going to, they're not going to make sure things are accurate uh, when you have uh, situations uh, to this level, to this degree, where you really need to make sure what you're doing uh, is completely accurate. It, it says that it, it cited cases and it cited specific outcomes of cases. I mean, it made up and it, it's totally made up all of it. Um, uh, so, you know, um, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty intense. And so here's another example. I'm sure you guys heard of this too. Market dips briefly after AI image of fake explosion near Pentagon goes viral. Uh, this happened on the 22nd. Uh, the U.S. stock market dipped Monday morning after a fake image of an explosion near the Pentagon uh, went viral. The image was apparently created with artificial intelligence and tweeted out by a verified account resembling Bloomberg News called Bloomberg Feed. The caption read, large explosion near the Pentagon complex in Washington, D.C. Initial report, the Pentagon confirmed to the Hill that the image was fake. Uh, Arlington Fire and EMS also debunked the image, tweeting they were aware of a social media report circulating online about an explosion near the Pentagon. There is no explosion or incident taking place at 
or near the Pentagon uh, reservation, and there is no immediate danger or hazards to the public. But shortly after the, da the now deleted AI image went viral, the market showed a brief dip with the Dow Jones Industrial Average falling about 80 points and this S&P 500 down 0.26%. Uh, According to CNN and Politico, the interruption to the market was brief, occurring only over a few minutes. But this is just the rumblings of what we're starting to see with generative AI, uh, what we're starting to see potentially happen. There's going to be a lot of people that embrace the tech uh, because all the conversations uh, uh, center and focus around how amazing it is and then the dangers of a real artificial intelligence and no one's really talking about hey the embracing of this tech and what we need to make sure we're doing uh when we when we look at it and so that's my opinions on this uh that's what i think we need to focus more on it seems like now uh they are they're starting to discuss it that's what that non-for-profit organization um is focusing on and talking about not getting the conversation off topic and obviously open ai's sam altman uh, is a part of that conversation and is choosing to be a part of that conversation. Uh, however, uh, you you know, like I said, I just personally, just from what I've read and how I know um, that a lot of uh, these organizations mostly operate and, and their concerns and what they're talking about, it is still um, part of a tactic and a plan for them to get in front of the storm uh, and protect their profits. And so we need to make sure that the conversation, although it's nice that Sam Altman's willing to have the conversation, I'm not trying to call him a bad guy. All I'm saying is that if we really want true um, teaching to the public and really want true prevention, we need to make sure that other people are a part of the conversation that don't have anything to gain uh, or lose uh, based on the uh, success or failure of the of the thing we're talking about. <laughs> so, so I think that's a very fair thing to say. Um, and, mo and all those people are that are a part of it do have something to gain or lose by the success or failure of that of that tech. I mean, they're all designing their own version of it. So we just need to make sure that we we have more people a part of the conversation that know what they're talking about and that we understand the risks of this uh, before it gets out of hand. If 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 a tweeted if a tweeted image has the potential to take a ding at the stock market like that, imagine what a a, a full on news organization uh, would do. Um, and if you think that news organizations are checking their sources before they send them out, you have not been a part of the conversation the past couple of years, especially when I just cited to you a case where a lawyer submitted a thing to a court case and basically rolled the dice on his entire career. We'll see what happens there. Um, so these are all things that would need to be discussed and talked about as we continue into this world of, in, of adopting generative AI. I just shared an article yesterday about how New York uh, City schools are um, embracing it and using it. And um, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that they are going to educate the students on the, the dangers of it, not to, because I'll tell you what, my school here with my kids are not doing the right thing with Google. And basically the teachers are telling my kids without even talking about it, uh, talking about the dangers of it, you know, oh, the, you can use Google for research and, and, it, and it'll find the, the real stuff. And it's like they're not even talking about how Google's not even that reliable and you need to do better research. So I've had to have multiple conversations with my children to talk to them about that. So I don't necessarily trust that schools are going to be a very great resource for students to properly learn what this stuff is and, and the potentials of where we're going to be in 10 years if it's not addressed. Anyways, that's my morning rant. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel. I appreciate you sticking around this time or for at least uh, as long as or sticking around to this point in the video. That's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah, and I will catch you guys in the next one.